Well, good evening everyone. Uh, my name's Eve Patton. I'm director of the Trinity Long Room Pub and I'm just delighted to welcome the audience that's uh, here with us in the room and also many people who are joining us online, including those joining us from Hong, Hong Kong. It's great to have you with us. Uh, the Trinity Long Room Hub is Trinity's uh, research institute for the arts and humanities and we are the host for the Centre for Resistance Studies, which is coordinated by my colleague Balaj Kaur, and you'll be hearing from him shortly, uh, and also for the Creative Arts Practice theme, which is led by my colleague Nick Johnson, who will also be talking to you. And they have been working with Dr. Mandy Lee from Medicine uh, in this really groundbreaking engagement with artists and other members of the Hong Kong community to put together this exhibition, We Persist, Therefore We Have Hope, Trauma and Resilience of Hong Kongers Through Their Art Since 2019. Uh, Shakespeare said that the object of art is to give life a shape. And over the past couple of days, as I've watched this exhibition and all the hard work that's gone into this exhibition finally taking shape uh, on this floor and, and above, I've really understood how art has given form and voice and visibility and shape to the suffering, the protest, the uh, resistance and the resilience um, of, of Hong Kong artists. And I want to applaud the artists themselves and also the organisers of, of this really uh, um, innovative and imaginative engagement and to welcome you. Uh, but I also want to welcome a very special guest speaker tonight who's going to introduce the exhibition. John Cushenhan is known, very well known to many of us as a former leader of the Alliance Party in Northern Ireland and former Fine Gael MEP, but he's also formerly EU rapporteur on Hong Kong and did that work in the immediate post-handover years from 1997 to 2004. And during John's 15 years in the European Parliament, he specialised in areas of foreign policy, uh, in security and in human rights. And within that remit, he's been a keen observer of Hong Kong affairs, um, particularly since the 2019 protests. Uh, and John has written extensively in Irish media and elsewhere to champion the cause for democracy and human rights in Hong Kong. So I'm, I'm really honoured, John, that we have you with us in the Hub this evening, and I'd love you to come up and say a few words about the exhibition. First of all, I'd like to thank the organisers for inviting me, and I thank Ava for her very kind words. I, I didn't realise it was me she was talking about. <laughs> um, it's an honour for me, um, to be asked to address uh, the opening of this art exhibition based upon the theme, as it has already mentioned, Trauma and Resilience, Voices of Hong Kongers Through Art Since 2019. As she has already mentioned, uh, it was exactly 25 years ago that I was appointed by the European Parliament as its rapporteur for Hong Kong to monitor the implementation of the 1984 CENO British Joint Declaration under which the United Kingdom agreed to transfer the colony back to China in 1997. As a rapporteur and after visiting Hong Kong on possibly eight occasions I authored several reports and a, a number of resolutions on ongoing developments in Hong Kong, all of which were, I'm pleased to say, endorsed overwhelmingly, uh, um, some actually unanimously, by the European Parliament and supported by the European Commission. I, in being honest, I was never convinced that China was totally committed to the Sino-British uh, Joint Declaration, particularly on democratic reforms. And this was always reflected in the conclusions of all that I did in the European Parliament. And for those of you who are studying this particular area, I can tell you that all the work that I did is accessible on the European Parliament website, so, and it's quite easy um, to access, I understand. But given the uh, understandable restrictions of times, permit me to now fast forward to the 2019-2020 protests, which provides the backdrop to the wonderful artwork which I had the honour 
of seen previously on email, uh, but, but uh, uh, Mandy brought me on a personal tour just before tonight's event. Um, there, the artistic work that, that, that I've witnessed provides us with a, a creative interpretation of the courage of the protest movement in opposition to the repression and the violence uh, of the Hong Kong authorities trying to destroy their particular movement. I was appalled at the violence they suffered. I was inspired by the commitment, the dedication and the bravery they showed. I admired them as I also admire the artists whose works are being exhibited here tonight. Knowing Hong Kong as I do, their willingness to provide their interpretation of the events of 2019 and 2020 also take courage, and I applaud them for it. Following these protests, China, supported by its puppet regime in Hong Kong, adopted a series of draconian national security measures in response. On the 30th of June 2020, the Standing Committee of the China National People's Congress passed the National Security Law, overriding Hong Kong laws and its judicial independence, thus effectively ending Hong Kong's autonomy. Freedom of speech, human rights, and the right to political dissent were the main casualties. Acting on these laws in uh, December 2020, leaders of the democracy protest movement, particularly people like Joshua Yong, Wong, Agnes Chow, and Evan Lam, were jailed, uh, followed by the arrest of the Hong Kong media billionaire tycoon Jimmy Lai, 74 years old he was, and he was the owner of the Apple Daily, uh, a tabloid paper which strongly uh, supported the uh, democratic movement. And in the following month, uh, both he, or the following series of months, uh, the, uh, the, the, the 30 others were also charged with uh, breaching the national security law. And speaking to legal experts, who are more expert, who are more expert than I am on this particular subject, they, they tell me that Jimmy La and Joshua Wong and, and, and others could possibly serve life sentences, and that's a horrifying prospect. Then in January 2021, 50 pro-democracy legislators and activists were arrested by the Hong Kong authorities and charged for subversion. Then, when the Hong Kong legislative uh, elections were rigged in December 2021, when pro-democracy candidates were excluded from standing, this resulted in pro-Beijing candidates taking 90% of the seats. And because of that, the final nails had been driven into the coffin of democracy and the Sino-British Treaty had been torn to absolute shreds. Even more depressingly, within the last week, John Lee has been appointed to the top political position in Hong Kong, that of Chief Executive. It was he, as Secretary for Security, which would be the equivalent of our Minister, uh, for justice, who harshly implemented the national security laws, resulting in the arrest and jailing of pro-democracy supporters, disbanding civil society groups and closing down liberal media organisations. Now, all of that was absolutely horrifying to the people of Hong Kong and those of us who have a deep affection for that part of the world. It's easy to curse the darkness that envelops the people of Hong Kong. However, more importantly, we can also choose to light a flame that will burn brightly, reigniting hope, and also shine a light that hopefully will reflect on the prison walls of those courageous supporters of democracy who languish in Hong Kong's jails. In doing this, we would be supporting the additional underpinning theme of the Hong Kong artists who exhibit their work today, which is, we persist, therefore we have hope. Inspired to that thing, I pledge myself to, do, to continue to do all that I can to build that hope. My challenge to many of you is will you join with me, inspired by the work of these guest artists? Will you join with me 
uh, to encourage our parliamentarians just around the corner to use uh, and, 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 and the parliament in which they sit to in, use their considerable influence to encourage our government to use that powerful influence, particularly within the EU and the UN National Security Council, to persuade, to persuade their international partners to engage more strongly on behalf of the people of Hong Kong. There are a number of them that do that, but not enough of them. Unfortunately, Hong Kong is a place in the other part of the world which they don't often think about. And it's up to people like you to lobby them and persuade them. Uh, and it's only by doing that we'll be able to ensure that Hong Kong is given priority on the Irish government's international agenda. And it's only by doing that we'll get them to do what's necessary to be done. And I hope that you might do that particular thing. I thank you for coming tonight. I thank you for listening to me. And once again, I thank the organizers for the invitation. And I repeat what I said. The people we need to thank most are the artists who have exhibited their work and, in, and indeed shown such great, great courage to do so. So thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Bola Zopor, and I'm representing the Center for Resistance Studies uh, here tonight. I only have a few sentences to say because I really think that uh, our artists, would, uh, we should hear uh, more from our artists and we should hear um, their opinion and their take on, on, on the artwork um, that we've spent um, such a long time uh, putting up in the last uh, couple of days. The reason uh, why the Centre, well the Centre is, is, is a relatively new institution and it's hosted by the Trinity Long Room Hub. The Centre was established uh, a little bit over uh, a year ago, I think uh, it was last um, February or March when it was officially uh, launched and uh, there are various, there's a whole range of disciplines that are represented in the center uh, including history, politics, medicine, um, uh, law, uh, culture studies, English and so on and so on. So there are, it represents a whole range of disciplines but over uh, the past year, which was a difficult year for, for all of us, um, um, uh, I guess uh, culture has emerged as one of the most prominent themes uh, in our activities. We recently launched um, a lecture series together with the Long Room Hub uh, on literature and, and resistance and uh, there will be a continuation uh, of, uh, of such events. There will be, uh, we are planning a, a several lectures for, for the coming academic year. We have recently launched a film club uh, called the Resistance Film Club. This is a, a small scale film club at the moment but we do have ambitions plans as well and we were really happy to support the idea to organize an exhibition dedicated to uh, protest art uh, or dedicated to the relationship between protest and art, which is not uh, necessarily uh, protest art, of course. Um, and at this stage I would be, really need to thank, uh, I guess, the, the main driving force behind uh, this exhibition and this is uh, uh, Mandy, Mandy Lee. This exhibition really was her dream, uh, and she was the, the primary uh, engineer behind, uh, behind the organization of this exhibition uh, in the past year or so. And I would also like to thank uh, Nick Johnson uh, from the School of Drama, uh, who brought uh, the whole field of creative uh, arts practice to us, uh, which to me uh, was, uh, well, it included a lot of learning, to be honest. Uh, uh, it was like uh, discovering um, an island full of dinosaurs in the middle of the ocean, so it's a whole new world uh, to me. But it was a fantastic experience working with, with Nick and Mandy the last uh, couple of months, and especially the last couple of days when, 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 we, when, we, when we had the opportunity to, to actually put the art uh, up on the walls. It was a really nice experience. And I would also like to thank uh, Eve Patton and the Trinity Long Room Hub for, for hosting the Centre for Resistance Studies, and of course for funding or sponsoring this very exhibition through the research incentive uh, uh, schemes, but but pr most <laughs> and and of course uh, I would also need to thank the artists and and of course they deserve uh, all our gratitude because they they gave permission to exhibit their artwork. There are some really powerful images uh, uh, up there as you will see um, after after this launch event. So I'd really like to thank you all, uh, and I would be really interested in, in hearing your opinion about your own work because we, we already have our own opinion, our perception um, uh, of, of your images and, and objects uh, that you sent us, but I would really be interested in, 
in, in, in hearing what you have to say. So you, this is uh, the first of many uh, similar events. So we do have plans in the center to organize similar events in the future. Again, events um, uh, investigating or studying the complex relationship between protest and resistance and cultures and opposition. Um, so we hope that this collaboration uh, between uh, Creative Art Practice, the Long Group Hub, and indeed uh, the School of Medicine will continue uh, in the future and there will be many uh, exciting uh, exhibitions of, of, uh, of a similar nature uh, in the future. And uh, without further ado, I would like to invite Mandy and, and our artists to actually talk about what matters, and that's art. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Balanj, for that wonderful introduction to our exhibition. It's been brilliant working with yourself and Nick over the last months on this project. Um, I just want to say a few words. First of all, um, I'm coming from the School of Medicine. Um, my interest is in narrative medicine, which has a primary focus on storytelling and lived experience. And we're interested not only in stories of trauma, but also of hope and healing, and also of endurance and resistance. And also, stories actually help us bridge cultures, and in that context, I want to introduce our artists this evening um, who have been joining us for this roundtable event. Um, I'm very proud to present them to you, and I will introduce them one by one because we have artists joining us both in person but also online as well. So, um, so first up, I would like to introduce you. Uh, I would like to introduce Carl Damon on our right hand side. Uh, Carl Damon is a, is a designer, illustrator, and lettering artist, and also a photographer. He is founder of the non-profit organization Cup of Color, working on community arts projects internationally. He originally came from Hong Kong, and is now based in Switzerland. And then I'd like to introduce Lamy Long Long on our far side. And Lamy Long Long uh, came from Hong Kong, who is an artist couple, and who have recently settled in the UK. They studied fine arts in France, and their works have been exhibited both in Hong Kong and internationally. They were previously lecturers of oil painting at the School of Continuing Professional Studies at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Most of the artworks are in the form of oil paintings in the grotesque style, with the aim of revealing social realities. Next, we have Mayo Wong, um, who is a visual artist, curator, creative consultant, and writer. Mayo was born in Hong Kong and has lived in the UK since 1998. Her work has been funded by the Arts Council in the UK, and the themes of her work vary from personal stories to wider social and political issues around the world. Art and activism are entwined in her practice. Then I would also like to introduce you to Wicca Choi, who is joining us also on Zoom from Canada. Wicca is a painter and a pianist, and has a career in financial risk management. He's joining us on Zoom from Canada, where he has immigrated from Hong Kong since the late 1980s. Since the 2019 protests, Wicker has decided to use art to honor Hong Kongers. He has been using his art to help raise money for Hong Kongers to settle in Canada. So welcome, Wicker. Last but not least, for my, the artist sitting right next to me, uh, I'd like to introduce you to Thea uh, Wong, sir, who is a former visual arts uh, teacher for, um, in Hong Kong, secondary school teacher in Hong Kong. He created, artists, uh, he created cartoons reflecting the 2019 protests that have been widely shared by the Hong Kong community. In 2020, he faced disciplinary action um, after his art was deemed inappropriate by the, by the education bureau in Hong Kong and has subsequently lost his job. Despite being put under continual pressure by publishing newspapers in Hong Kong, he continues to make and share art about our home city. So more details about our artists and also their short reflections on their works can be found on the Padlet links that have been shared with our registered attendees. So you should be able to see them um, uh, online as well. And uh, for this round table, I have a number of questions prepared, but because we have limited time, I mean, this is going to be just a conversation uh, primarily. I, we would like to hear from our artists about how they create and share art in the re increasingly repressive environment that is Hong Kong. So without further ado, I'd like to pose my first question to our artists. Um, basically, I would like to understand what motivates you um, in, to create the art that has been featured in our exhibition. Do you aim your art at, an, at the Hong Kong community, or do you have an international audience in mind? And I'm wondering maybe if 
somebody can start us off? Um, I would like to start. Um, sorry. Um, I would like to start first. Um, for me, I'm a Hong Konger. Um, even though I lived in the UK for over 20 years, but I remember uh, in 2014 when um, the uh, demonstration in Hong Kong, uh, they stayed there for 79 days on the uh, main commercial streets. And that year, actually, I, I planned to go back to Hong Kong to visit my families and friends. But I couldn't go back because we were moving home. But my mind and my heart was with the Hong Kong people, and I was so impressed by what they have done. Yeah, I was so impressed by the uh, people, especially the young, uh, young generation on the streets, and also uh, I was inspired by their creativity how they use the images and use different things to express their ideas. I mean, what they ask for is very basic. They just want to have the rights, the political rights, to choose their leaders and have a representative uh, from their society in the um, legislative council. But it wasn't allowed to have what they asked for. And I remember at the end of the movement, a lot of, it's like, um, the community felt like deflated. A lot of people felt like, oh, we didn't succeed anything. We didn't get anything. So we, we were failed. So a lot of people feeling very down and upset about what could we do? We couldn't do anything. So for me, I felt like when I go back to Hong Kong the year after, I want to bring something. So I did a piece of artwork to, to show them, to encourage Hong Kong. Yes, it looks like you haven't got anything, but don't give up, carry on. So I asked a lot of friends and, um, uh, in the UK and also in the international community uh, to, to help me to create this piece of work. Ask them to give me like a phrase, a slogan, or even a prayer so that I can hand stitches the messages on the square uh, uh, fabric and then bring it back to Hong Kong and I show this piece of work in a local church, it's a small church. But unfortunately, that church in, after National Security Law uh, uh, introduced, they were one of the organizations dismantled. It's really sad to see that basic um, rights, basic freedom of society or churches or community, all their rights and freedom is taken away one by one. Um, but for me, I still want to use my art and words to express my support. And also, I feel like I'm, I'm not living in Hong Kong, but I'm still part of it. So I feel like I want to use my space, my freedom, living in this free society, to carry on to support the movement and support the fight for uh, all the Hong Kong and the fellow Hong Kongers. Thank you so much, Mayo. That is a really powerful kind of um, message to end. And also, I think that uh, your experience of being a, an overseas Hong Konger and um, wanting to carry on the fight is also quite similar to, I think, Cobb Damon, because I think you would also like to say something about uh, what motivates you for creating the, the art that we see featured in our exhibition. So maybe I hand over to Damon. Um, yeah, so um, I guess uh, what I can. What I can share is about, so I'm, I was not there in Hong Kong during the movement. So I basically lived with my family in Switzerland. And um, so through the, all the changes, it was really heavy. It's like a burden. I feel that a lot of people, they are not living in Hong Kong, but they are watching the news. And they are actually absorbing all these different emotions. So. Um, I guess um, that's also one of the reasons why I would like to put out some some message to voice out um, how I'm looking at the the whole situation. And um, so my way of seeing it is, I mean, basically a lot of people they've been doing a lot of great um, protest art or even um, illustration or writings or paintings about about the happening, but. So I'm using my voice to to tell another 
uh, way to see from my perspective. You know? So um, I believe this is a way that also when we share this possibility of seeing hope, um, then we can uh, pass on the light. And I think that's one of the reasons I, I guess all of us, we actually uh, sharing our thoughts to give uh, encouragement, to give understanding um, uh, to people they would, would feel the resonance, the resonance from the artist piece, um, the art. And I think I especially feel um, uh, there's such a big need to uh, voice out the hope because the situation is dark enough. And I, I guess some of us might know already another five person got arrested today. Um, so, and they are really um, great person and they are not even radical activists, right? So I would say that they're very careful. Uh, some of them, they're lawyer, they're lecturer from the school. Um, so the situation is dark enough. So I guess um, what we need is to, to focus on hope. And uh, even though we cannot change the whole situation, but I, I found that people need comfort. People need understanding. And uh, yeah, so I was I was moved that uh, how actually in Hong Kong we have not uh, such a big place. We have seven million people, but there's quite a lot of very good artists and illustration artists. They're reflecting. They're uh, taking the risk to uh, voice out. So I guess uh, I'm just one of them. But uh, I was very moved to see how many of them they actually take action to reflect. Yeah, thank you so much, Carl Damon, because what you're saying about the example of the five people who got arrested uh, today really is reflective of the increasingly repressive environment that is Hong Kong, which brings me to my next question, which is about some of the challenges that have been um, you know, imposed on artists or anybody with kind of, uh, who would want to express themselves freely, and especially since the introduction of the national security law in 2020. So maybe I, I would like our panel to let us know some of the challenges that you have encountered in creating and showing art in Hong Kong, and what kind of pressures, if any, have you faced as an artist in Hong Kong or as an overseas Hong Kong artist? So I think maybe Romney and Mom, you want to talk a little bit more about your experience. Yes. Hi. Uh, we have been in the UK for eight and nine months. Ten months. Ten months, yeah. And we fled Hong Kong to the UK for the proselytes and remote causes uh, for the recent ones because uh, we have participated uh, in an exhibition in 2021, yeah, in June. Yeah. Actually, um, yeah, we fled Hong Kong because uh, uh, of that exhibition, uh, we are not sure, but uh, we fled Hong Kong because the pro China newspaper, Ben Wei Po, reported us four times within a year. Five times? Actually, it's five times because, uh, yes. So, um, the police came to our studio to frighten us, and I still remember he said, uh, there is a case about you both. And then I asked him, what case is it? And then he, he said, I can't tell you, but I'll be back. It's just like the Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we, we were so scared at the and, time. Yeah, and five minutes later, there was a man who like who looked like a child king, and he rudely rang a do doorbell and waved a big stick, a big stick to threaten us. So we saw all this on our, on our CCTV. Yeah, and, and also the, the how to say the the Pro-China newspaper always, uh, also said that we are we are suspected of violating the Hong Kong national security law. And uh, we always use arts to promote Hong Kong independence. So we, we think uh, we are not we are not we are, we were not safe anymore. So that's why we fled Hong Kong to the UK. So yeah. now we are based in London now. And one of our painted album entitled Libra, uh, which was a bad book nowadays. So uh, the Hong Kong people cannot buy this. And then and one of the our painting album, uh, which was recommended by Cardinal Cardin Joseph Sam, who was arrested today, uh, yeah. And uh, we are very sorry that and because we cannot tell, we could not tell my father that we leave Hong Kong because one of our relative who works on the National Security Department. We only tell him until we li we we are in the UK safely. Yeah. That is all because we got because yes. 
lung cancer, and we are afraid that we will never be able to visit him in Hong Kong. Yeah, we miss our family and we, and we miss our friends in Hong Kong because uh, some of them are still in prison in Hong Kong. But uh, actually, we uh, and last time, uh, last month, uh, we uh, although we are still we are now in the UK, but we are not totally safe here. We are, we are physically safe. Yeah, we are physically safe, but uh, our uh, last month, our my Facebook account and my IG account and our our IG account were banned by Facebook last month and. For any reason, the hacker hacked into our Facebook page and uh, changed our username and um, our information. So we, we, don't, we don't think we are totally safe uh, in, in the UK, although because of the own, uh, there are so many informers on the internet. So we have to be careful because uh, our family are still in Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah and at that time, uh, the information of my bank card, the credit card, had been stolen by someone. So I immediately canceled my card. And luckily, there was no loss. Uh, but in a nutshell, we can say uh, we are in bad luck because everything happened in April. In the big, maybe all these things are related to the last exhibition yeah, yeah, yes. in, uh, in London. In London. Yeah. And we were reported by the pro CCP again. Newspaper. Yeah, but uh, again and again. The, 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 the reporter pretend to be an audience to attend to our exhibition and then. Uh, and then he wears something, uh, also the same things, uh, these bad guys uh, doing something, uh, want to promote Hong Kong independence, something like that. So so the, uh, we, we need to be careful here too. Yeah, yeah. and actually, uh, we have created the socially engaged work for over 10 years. So looking back at 2015, we have participated in uh, Tibetan uh, cultural festival. And at that time, someone even set fire at back staircase. So uh, we were scared, but we only painted and commemorated the peaceful Tibetan self immolators And in 2018, uh, my personal uh, account was banned by Facebook. And Facebook, um, some of our friends who works on Facebook and told us that each of our posts had been reported hundred to thousand of times. So um, it's, it's ridiculous. But actually, we uh, wrote so many emails <coughs> to Facebook and no reply. That's that. no response. But although we, we think, uh, although so many, uh, it's, it's, it's not easy to to uh, to live like that. But uh, we think we'll continue to speak because um, we always we, we all say we always say to ourselves that. If we shut up, why don't we just stay in Hong Kong? So uh, we will do more and speak for our uh, siblings in Hong Kong. Yeah, we yeah. feel we felt guilty because uh, many of our friends and protesters were arrested in prisons, and we feel insecure, like being robbed. Yeah, uh, uh, especially the last month. But we will keep voicing out and painting. Uh, because uh, we would like to express all our feelings, our anger, sadness, and homesickness on the campus. And we hope the next generation can will never forget our history. Yeah, so the, because uh, uh, as, a, as a painter, we, we have the advantage that we can use images to avoid uh, AI censorship on the internet, you know. So, uh, so we always said that we should paint and more and, and white less. less. <laughs> it's our yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe it is much harder to censor a painting rather than worse. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we yeah we always said just like the title of this exhibition, we do not persist uh, only when we see hope, uh, but only we persist. Yeah. Exactly, we can see hope. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think what you have shared with us is the many different forms of repression that has been happening against artists, so you were physically threatened uh, by, by the police and by other gang members, apparently, and you were also then, your own kind of, uh, your, your speech and images were also kind of censored online by kind of mass reporting of your accounts and you lost your accounts and everything else. So it is basically a kind of, uh, a full spectrum repression that is happening against uh, Hong Kongers to try to voice out. And I think that that, will, that is kind of similar to the experience of VA Wonser. Um, if you want to say a few things about the work that I've experienced. Okay. Good evening. Uh, I'm Wei Wonser. I really stand for visual art, and my first name is Wong. And I'm I was a teacher in Hong Kong, so students call me Wonser in Hong Kong. 
Uh, actually, I'm a normal person in Hong Kong, even I'm not a famous artist uh, before the protest. I'm just a secondary school visual art teacher uh, who are joined some comment on online. Uh, because I have a full-time job, my my I I make my artwork I I make my artwork need to be very fast, and my content are all about some uh, daily life and daily news or something I would like to express to the government. I don't think my comment will be widely shared on internet. However, a uh, half year later, I lost my job. Uh, the Education Bureau in Hong Kong complained that uh, I am doing inappropriate artwork on internet and that may make some students feel anger uh, to the Hong Kong police or the Hong Kong government. So I lose my job. Uh, I think I'm an example that indicates that uh, even a normal person in Hong Kong is living in fear. Uh, we couldn't speak freely or comment or draw freely about our government and cannot speak freely. Uh, after losing my job, uh, the fear is not end. Uh, I published a book uh, last year and some Chinese media claim that uh, my book is violates the national security law again. And, and also, a uh, cafe owner invited me to hold a exhibition in his cafe and some people sue the owner that the exhibition is unauthorized. Uh, this is what I experienced these two years. Yeah, and what you have explained is just the fact that not only were you actually uh, disciplined over your, your the cartoons that you shared, and actually if you, uh, those of us who are in this room, uh, you will have a chance to view the art uh, upstairs after this round table, and you can see basically just how mild the cartoons are. I mean, it's it's just simply sharing what Hong Kongers have been feeling over these last few years, and even those images are deemed inappropriate and inciting students to anger against the police. And that, that really kind of explains the, the ridiculousness uh, to which um, kind of people's freedom of expression has been reduced, uh, has, has been subjected to. And I think that also, um, Wicca, you may also want to share your experiences as well as, a, as an overseas Hong Kong artist about some of the pressures that you might have felt, if you, if you want to contribute. Yes, hi. <clears throat> so, um, as a, because I'm overseas, so I rely a lot on social media for me to be able to post my work. And just like what Lamy Lam Long were saying, censorship in social media is really, really grave. So I, my painting has been censored by LinkedIn, because LinkedIn has a presence in China, or I think it used to have. And I post that painting, and LinkedIn somehow censored that. Uh, it's just about uh, Hong Kong. And then uh, Facebook recently, uh, what happened is I posted a news, a video about what's happening in Shanghai, about the zero COVID strategy, about the cruelty. So the post I posted on Facebook was fine for a whole week, and no issue at all. But then suddenly, one day after a week, it censored me, saying that, oh, this is against the community standard, out of the group, and banned me for 30 days. And then when it banned me, immediately next day, the Chinese state media newspaper, when Weibo, published an article saying I have infringed the national security law uh, because of my participation in an exhibition in UK and also because of my social media posts, etc. So I, there, there, there is hard not to have conspiracy theory saying that maybe there is something happening in Facebook inside that is uh, some person there maybe uh, working secretly. You, you don't know about well, uh, censorship from CCP because the timing is just so uh, coincidental. Just like when Lam Yul social media were canceled somehow before the exhibition. So that was one challenge. And then the other challenge is because I've been in Canada for like, more than 30 years, and I have uh, for a long time lost my Hong Kong identity. So for a long time, I didn't watch Hong Kong news, didn't even know who is the chief executive, and didn't follow like, Hong Kong culture. So when 2019 suddenly the one million, two millions, and the persistent resistance 
against the communist regime, uh, it kind of shaped me and I was brought back to my roots, which I have lost for like 30 years. So the challenge is like I find like when I started posting my art and talking to some uh, Nets friends that I never met who is in Hong Kong, there were a few times they were they were like talk to me and say, oh, you're not in Hong Kong, you've left so long, you really don't know as much as we do. So it was a little bit uh, kind of, uh, you can say, like, saddened to hear that, because I do know I've left Hong Kong for so long, and I have this challenge of not being there in person. And so I do realize that's a gap I have, and so what I would do is I try to subscribe to a lot of like, Hong Kong protest magazines, that like, there's a flow Hong Kong, uh, magazines I read and try to get to understand the views of Hong Kongers, uh, the different aspects, front line versus um, yeah, the, the peaceful protesters, what they think, etc. I also try to immerse myself into the culture of Hong Kong, uh, such as like watch UTV shows to understand a lot of inside jokes that they have, uh, or watch uh, Mira. Uh, I, I it's my first time I ever I bought the Mira concert, 2000. 21 or 2020 concert. I, I never bought the pop music box set ever. Because I, my focus has always been classical music, so it's my first ever pop concert uh, box set. So, and watch Hong Kong Daily News. So that's how I try to mend the gap I have. And I think it's going to be more and more difficult because with all, this, all the news media going down, the Apple Daily, Stan News, and there's a third one, like John Simon, they all gone down. So how do we overseas be able to connect with Hong Kong by watching news? It's getting harder and harder. So I think these are the challenges. And the last one is like going forward, what do I paint? I, that's the problem I have because when I'm still stuck in 2019. I still have so many things I want to paint because I felt I wasn't there. I want to participate and experience it in some way. And by painting it, painting different scenes is my way of experiencing it. But going forward, do I still go back to 2019 and paint the scenes? Or what do I uh, create? That's a thing, something I don't really know uh, what to do going forward. So that's a kind of artistic challenge I have for myself. Thanks so Thank much, you. Wicker. Uh, it was funny when I heard you say that you were a fan of, or became a new fan of Mira, which is one of the kind of canto pop, uh, kind of uh, popular boy bands at the moment. But <laughs> the thing is, what we are saying is that art and pop music, you know, connects people together. And, um, you know, this is the reason why we, we, we present an exhibition like this, to showcase Hong Kong as art, uh, to connect people together, and uh, connect Hong Kong community with the rest of the world. Um, I think that I would like to just ask another question, which, which is more to do with the theme of this exhibition on the trauma and resilience. And we have heard from our panel about the fact that you know a lot. Of, I mean, you, you mentioned about the pain of missing your family, about uh, being you know having to leave, and, um, and and just the fear that you came across and everything else. I wonder if, um, and I think that maybe also, uh, Kong Damon, you want to say something about the kind of, the, the theme of trauma and resilience that are represented in your art? I mean, uh, how I understand it, um, because um, apart from Hong Kong, uh, actually, me and my wife, we, we work on many uh, community art projects. Uh, what we do is actually to give space for the people to, to voice, and also we believe that every tier needs a space to be placed. That means all the different kind of struggles, uh, suffering and pain, actually we should give them space and value. When there's no space to be placed, then we don't know where to address those, those feelings deep inside. So actually, uh, this is a very difficult or uh, challenging issue. I guess every, every um, artist is facing so how can we still um, still respond to the to the to the society or to the people around us apart from expressing what we feel, right? So um, I in in my way of seeing as there's always um, I would say there's two points that I think it is helping this process to get closer to people 
One is about conversation. So that means that we stay in conversation. Of course, there's um, some people we, we see them as enemy or they are really evil, right? So it's difficult to have conversation. But I'm talking about to stay in conversation with the people that they actually, they might got manipulated or it could be our neighbors, it could be even our friends or our families, you know. There's so much splitting in the society now. Um, I don't think we have to agree on every point that of, the, of the people they are talking about. But uh, to stay in conversation is actually is a way of showing resilience. Because it's a time process and it's difficult to stay in, in talking with the other person and the other... Um, I think one of the important part of conversation is listening. Right? So without that, actually, we have no way to get further on. Maybe like Rika said, so how can we move forward? You know, how much we actually have to look back and how much we have to look forward. And I think the second point is relationship. Um, relationship to people, to our community, relationship to our own feeling, to our body. Um, so I see this true key elements are very important that when we want to bring um, reconciliation, we want to bring values to those um, places we want to place the tears. Thank you so much, Carl Damon. That is a very powerful message about the need for communication and uh, for effective listening spaces. And I'm very grateful to the Hub again for allowing us that space to actually have this discussion, this conversation in this communal space. Um, I realize that the, our time is running up, so I will kind of just for, fast forward to our last question, which is to allow our participating artists to talk about, um, do you have, if you have any words you may want to say to the people who have come to get tonight to view the art that you have shared with us, um, do you have any messages for the international community or to your fellow Hong Kongers? So maybe we start from Nami Long Wong. One of our paintings called Thousand Hands Man, which has been exhibited now, and we would like to say Thousand Hands Man is not about something by God, but something ongoing. As long as you have the sense of the uh, resistance and, and a new experience among the people, Thousand Hands Man is always with you, so as everyone else, everyone is Thousand Hands Man. So uh, we hope to use this painting to encourage the Hong Kong people and have no fear as we are all together. Yeah, uh, I'd like to say that uh, we, are, we are not victims because uh, uh, you know, we, are, we live in the, we are near, near the big monster. You know, we, we think that uh, China is a big monster to want to eat the whole world. So we, we actually we, uh, we just want to seek help from, from the foreign countries. But, but if they always said that we are... We, uh, we are violating uh, the collusion with foreign forces, but if collusion with foreign forces can save Hong Kong, we would love to do so. It is because, not Yeah, so actually, uh, we are not only saying that we, we, we need help, but because we are, maybe in the future, we will be, we will, the, the situation will be more serious and more grave in, in the future, so uh, we need to be together. We, I think we are all one. Yeah. yeah, because there's no single issue in the world, but a change of issues. Thank you. you? Um, for me, I think uh, I'd like to say to the Hong Kong, still in Hong Kong, if they're struggling, just remember, even those in, the, in jails, just remember you are not forgotten. Even we are a thousand miles away, we still remember you and we'll try our best. And also for, uh, for the international community, I, I just want to say that we are interconnected. We are part of the global community. So something happened in one country or in a city, it actually affects us as well. We live in the same um, uh, planet. Um, like for example, what happened in COVID, um, it helps us to realize that the, something happening in just one city, it can travel miles away to affect everybody else. And, and if we think about uh, a lot of people, they feel ho hopelessness or helplessness. Maybe if each one of us have, can do a little bit things, whatever within your power, 
um, maybe it will help them to reduce their miserable, uh, horrible situation. One of the things I always ask myself to do is, um, at least when I do shopping, try to be more ethical because if this product is made by forced labor, if I buy it, carry on buying it for my convenience, then I'm helping the authority to make some people in the miserable or in kind of concentration camp or in forced labor market. So I think every one of us can do something about it. Uh, for me, I would like to thank you for all of you for coming tonight to support us, even your verbal support or uh, uh, the awareness of us is already already gave us a great support. Uh, please help us to spread the situation of us and let the people know that we are under pressure. Wicca. Um, I think uh, to everyone, I just like to uh, honor Hong Kong people who has really fought a really great battle and taught how uh, taught us in the West how freedom is not something we can take for granted because we can see with our own eyes in just very short time how freedom is completely destroyed in a used to be very prosperous and free society. So I think uh, for everyone, we need to protect our freedom and democracy because it's very fragile. Thank you. And Carl Damon? We shall overcome and we shall choose hope and light because in that way we could build up trust again to each other and to believe that we can always do something, um, even the smallest thing, and it makes uh, the impact. Thank you so much, Carl Damon. And uh, before I sign off and hand over to my colleague, I'd just like to thank our artists again very much for the courage that they're showing us through sharing, creating and sharing your artworks and for joining us here tonight and speaking about your experiences. I'm really grateful for, for you guys to be here. And I also want to thank the wider Hong Kong community who has been so supportive of this project. Um, I have to thank them anonymously or pseudonymously, but they, they, they know who they are, the people that help us, so thank you so much. And uh, just maybe a final say to say, Hong Kong and Gaio. Thank you all so much. Um, my name is Nick Johnson, and I lead uh, or convene rather the uh, creative arts practice research theme here at the Hub. And I was one of the three curators, and um, I'm somewhat uh, dealing with a little bit of emotion at the moment, um, coming off uh, the end of listening to the artists' voices. So, um, if you hear the quaver uh, in me, it's from uh, the force of what we've heard here tonight. So, um, I want to thank you all again for providing the words and the language. Um, I've been reflecting as I've sat here that the creative arts practice theme has used this phrase for a long time that um, it's, it's partly designed to give voice to the voiceless. And I think um, we've just disproved um, the wording that we've used there. Um, this is not a voiceless community in any sense, so we need to nuance um, the language there that says um, it's not so much the voice of the voiceless, but rather those who struggle uh, to express within their local context, um, in the place uh, where there has been exclusion or repression in particular, that the role of a university in an open culture is uh, to elevate those voices that have been excluded from contexts or from audiences of a billion people where that same art uh, cannot be displayed or cannot be circulated without severe uh, personal consequences. So the role, I think, uh, of the university, as I've been reflecting on a kind of closing statement, um, is not to really think of the word closure at all, but rather that um, this is a moment of opening. And that uh, what we hope to invite you to when you go upstairs is uh, an open exhibition uh, in an open room, in an open university, in an open society. And uh, we would ask you to express uh, through your uh, vision of that your own form of openness, uh, whatever that, that is to you, whether it uh, generates emotion and that brings it up, if it generates contradictions or confusion or concern, 
Um, what we ask is for each of you to, uh, to sit with it, to reflect on it. Um, the exhibition is open for a month. You can come back, you can see more things, you can speak to us while we're here, you can speak to one another. And there are several ways to engage with the exhibition uh, physically as well. There is a linen wall, uh, so as you see on the upper level over where there are cranes, you are invited to add a post-it note and send your own message uh, to that space. There are postcards which are available uh, for free, uh, designed by one of our artists, uh, Monk Monkey, and uh, those uh, you can take and we encourage you to display them or send them to a friend, uh, share the message around. And uh, we invite you as well to, uh, to tell others. So if you're here tonight and you found something interesting, uh, let people know that it's here and that it's uh, available to you. So uh, to conclude uh, this moment then, uh, I would just uh, invite you very much the curatorial strategy that Mandy uh, and Balaj and I have had in handling this material has been first uh, to listen. Uh, this is the first openness that we've had, is just to try to hear what are the voices telling us? What, are the, what is the language that's being expressed? And in a kind of patient mode to listen and try to hear. Um, second, to talk and, and connect with them, connect with each other, hear the narratives that emerge, and finally, uh, to tell, uh, to share. So we're now at that moment. We invite you to, uh, to go upstairs. We tell you uh, what we've arrived at from that listening, um, but that's only the beginning of a new cycle uh, of listening, talking, and telling. So um, I thank you all for being here tonight. I thank uh, my co-curators. I thank uh, the Hub, which has been absolutely indispensable at every level of this process, and uh, all of our audience listening online. Um, we express our warmth and solidarity to those of you who are listening from abroad, and particularly those from the Hong Kong community. And uh, we end by saying, welcome. And uh, we invite you upstairs, and thank you all. Thank you.